through the roof to Jesus. In every town Jesus entered, he healed many people. The news spread that he was in Capernaum. A large crowd gathered to hear him speak. Jesus was still teaching when four people came up carrying their paralyzed friend on a mat. But they could not get their friend inside to Jesus because the house was full of people. Kids, in this picture, you can see the house. Around the house is filled with people. Obviously, with so much people being at the entrance of the house, these friends couldn't get their paralyzed friend through the entrance. And so, they thought of another means to get their friend into the house to meet Jesus. Listen on, kids. The four men knew in their hearts that Jesus could heal their friend. They wanted to get him to Jesus. So the four men went to the roof above Jesus and made a hole in it. Then they lowered the mat with the crippled man on it. In this picture, you can see the crippled man on the mat. And I can see, you can also see in the picture, his friends trying to make a hole through the roof so they can take their crippled friend down to meet Jesus. In this picture, kids, you will see the rest of the men still trying to open a hole through the roof to get the paralyzed man to Jesus. In a small box there, in this picture, it says, how many friends help the paralyzed man? Kids, how many friends help the paralyzed man? Was it two or was it four? When Jesus saw how much faith these men had, he said to the paralyzed man, My friend, your sins are forgiven. Some of the teachers of the law were there. They saw what Jesus did and they said among themselves, Why does this man say things like that? No one but God can forgive sins. Jesus knew what they were thinking and he said, Why are you thinking such things? Do you not believe that I can forgive sins? Jesus then said to the man, Get up, pick up your mat and go home. Children of God, Jesus saw how strong these men had faith in him. These men were so strong in their faith. They believed that if only they could just get their friend, their paralyzed friend to Jesus, that Jesus would heal him. Their faith, that faith was so powerful that when Jesus saw them, he said, he said to the man, get up. Pick up your mat and go home. Your sins are forgiven. That was so powerful. It was so powerful that even some teachers of the law heard Jesus telling, telling the paralyzed man that, oh, your sins are forgiven. And they were confused. They were like, he's not God. Why should he tell the man that his sins are forgiven? Mm -hmm. Do you know what, kids? Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Son of God. So he can forgive us our sins. Bless the name of the Lord. Let's read on. Immediately, the man jumped up picked up his mat and went out of the house while everyone praised God and said, we have never seen anything like this. 
How wonderful. Immediately, Jesus told this paralyzed man that your sins are forgiven. Get up. Take your mat and go home. Immediately, the man jumped up, picked up his mat and went out of the house. And everybody, you can see the man, he was, you, you saw in the beginning of the story how he was laid down on the mat. He couldn't move. And now look at him in this picture. His hands stretched out in the air, praising God, his legs standing. The people around him praising and rejoicing and saying, Hallelujah, praise God, praise God, praise God. Just like when God does something for you and your family, you praise him, right? Oh, yes. We praise God for life. We praise God for food. We praise God for water. We praise God for shelter. We praise God for his deliverance, his power over our lives, his favor, his love. We praise him because he loves us. He's our creator. Oh, I can go on and on for the reasons why we have to praise God. Not just because he gives us things. But because he's our creator, he's worthy to be praised. He is worthy. Kids, Jesus, God is worthy to be praised all day long, every time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so excited about this story. The powerful thing that happened was their faith. Oh, only if you can just have faith, even as small as a mustard seed, as small as as what should i say for you kids to understand mm. Mm. should i say as small even if it's as small as the seed of a lemon i know you guys have seen seeds of lemon just that <laughs> is enough to move mountains trust in god we need to trust in god for everything everything in your academics, trust in God. Trust in Him. In this time, with this COVID-19 and all that is going on, we need to trust in God to protect us, to keep us safe, and to also heal us when we're sick. In this picture, we can see all the people outside. Some of them, they were with sickness and diseases. God had, Jesus had healed them. They were happy. They were rejoicing with the paralyzed man. They were praising God. And in the little box in this picture, it says, Dear God, thank you for healing our bodies. Hmm. I just want you to take a few minutes to thank God for healing us from every sickness, for healing us from every pain. You don't know what God does for you. Do you know what God does for you? He takes care of you. There are so many people, so many people that don't know God. But because you know God, God will take care of you. He will always be there for you no matter what. No matter what. Always trust in him. Always have faith in him. Always love him. Always talk to God. Always praise God. Always have a conversation with God. Be close to God. Listen to him. Honor him. Thank him for the little things every day. Because he is worthy to be praised. Praise God.